Bible text will come from Psalms, the 27th division, beginning at verse number 1 and concluding at verse number 14. It's from this text that we will lift our thought for this afternoon's session centered around the subject, Heavenly Hope in Hard Times. The Bible reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David goes on to say that when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desire of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies. He goes on to say, round about me, therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. He goes on to say, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. O God of my salvation, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed in the Believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This psalm, written between 1020 to 970 B.C., is a psalm that is demonstrating David's desire and his trust in the hope of God. This psalm is written by a man who was oftentimes troubled and at other times triumphant. This psalm is written by a man with a proclivity toward poetry. This man, oftentimes melancholy, was yet a man in search of the mercy of God. This man was oftentimes depressed and yet determined to do what God would have for him to do. This psalm follows a number of events in David's life. David had already dealt with Goliath on the battlefield of Israel. He had already slain the lion and the bear in the shepherd's fold of his father. He had already been, been, been delivered from uh, the, the jealous hand of the then king Saul uh, when he was trying to prevent David from receiving the kingdom. He had already had the problem with Bathsheba and the lust that he ultimately allowed to consume him, bearing forth a child that would ultimately die. David has already dealt with Saul's daughter, Michael, and her misbehavior. He's already dealt with Absalom and his desire to take David's kingdom. David had already dealt with the problem between two of his children, Amnon and Tamar, when Amnon had attempted to rape his sister, had actually raped his sister. And David had already dealt with the loss of his best friend, Jonathan. So it's no, it's no wonder that David can write a passage of this nature showing that he has hope in hard times because David is not unfamiliar with hard times. And if you are living in this day and age, there will be a time where you will deal with hard times. If you have not gone into hard times, or if you're not just uh, right now dealing 
with hard times and you must understand that you need to just keep on living because eventually you will come across something that will cause you to question who you are. But in this text, David identifies that he has hope in hard times. Now what is hope? Hope is a basketball player who is striving to play first string for the basketball team. He hopes to make first string. A businessman hopes that his business will flourish. A young man hopes that the women of his affection will accept his proposal for marriage. A family traveling across country hopes that they will make it safely to their destination. Hope is the favorable, confident expectation of an individual within. If you want to look at it from a biblical perspective, the Bible says that hope is a byproduct of the scriptures. For we find Paul saying to the church at Rome, in Romans chapter 15, and verse number 4, he says, Those things written aforetime are written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. So hope is a byproduct of God's divine word. Hope is that which undergird, or is undergirded by faith. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So hope finds its undergirding or its foundation in faith. We find and understand that, that hope is what differentiates those that are children of God from those that are the children of the world. For I hear Paul saying to the church at Thessalonica, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and verse number 13, he says, Brethren, I would not, be, I would not that you would be ignorant concerning them which are asleep, and sorrow not as others which have no hope. So hope is that which differentiates the child of God from the child of the God of this world. And then we need to understand that hope keeps company with faith and charity. For I find the Apostle Paul saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 13, Now abide of these, faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity. But notice the company that hope keeps, faith and charity. And then we understand, according to the Hebrew writer in Hebrews chapter 6, and verse number 9, when he talks about the coming back of the Lord, he says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. So hope is a necessity in the life of every individual. But for the child of God, and particularly here, as David is exclaiming in this passage of hope, he says, first of all, uh, the nature of the hope. First of all, he says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. In this text, Beginning in verse number 1 through verse number 14, you will find that there are five types of hope that David exclaims in this text. The first of those hopes is the hope of a directional nature. In other words, David has directional hope. What do you mean by that, Brother Jackson? Look at verse number 1. He says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In Psalms 27 and verse 1, he identifies, first of all, that God is the direction in his life because he says, The Lord is my light. I hear David saying on another occasion, Psalm 119 and verse number 105, he says, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So my point is, is that David gets his direction ultimately from God. And any time God is mapping out your course, you have hope in this present world.